right, welcome everyone. This regular meeting of the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee will now come to order at 7.01 on March 22nd, 2018. Please note this meeting is being both audio and video recorded, and if anyone is in the audience is recording this meeting, please disclose that at this time. So then we'll move on. All those who are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With the superintendent, please take roll. Dr. Crabtree? Yes. Ms. Tichamasa? Yes. Mr. Farley is not here tonight. Mr. Gazilla? Here. Mr. Hagmeyer? Here. Mr. Hopper? Here. Ms. Keith is not here. Mrs. Latizori? Is not here. Mr. Less? Here. Mr. Peters? Here. Mrs. Tucker? Here. Mr. Wagner? Here. Mr. Armacost? Here. We still have an open seat in Washington. Mr. Bartels? Here. Our CBA rep won't be here tonight, mm -hmm. and our student rep, hi Zach. Yeah. Zach's here, we have a quorum. Okay, thank you. The chair validates, or the chair certifies this agenda is valid in accordance with open meeting law. And um, moving on to the first article of business, if there's anyone in the, in the audience who wishes to um, address the committee at this time, please be recognized. Mr. Callahan. Thank you, Mr. Armacos. My name is Tom Callahan. <coughs> uh, with me is Mrs. Rose Lively who was the wife of our former phys ed teacher and basketball coach, I might add Hall of Fame basketball coach at Wakona. Our purpose tonight is to give compliments to the high school staff by way of accommodating us when we bring Coach Ladley to basketball games. For the past three years, Jim Conroe's last year, in taking Ed to games, it became a little difficult. So we we're able to receive preferential seating at that time, and that worked for us very well. As Ed's condition regressed somewhat, last year we got better preferential seating and we got parking privileges. This year we faced the same challenge. A couple of friends from Pittsfield and a lot of local people help us when we go to games. Mr. Shannon, took it upon himself this year to call ahead to some away games that he knew we were going to and arrange for preferential seating there and, and egress as well, including at the cage just a couple of weeks ago for the Western Mass playoffs where the boys and the girls from Wakona played, as you know. I don't think we could have got Ed to the games as many times this year and, and most likely last year without these accommodations. The staff at, that manages the, the games has been wonderful as well. So our thanks go to former principal Jim Conroe, principal Aaron Robb, and uh, athletic director Jared, Jared Shannon, who has so much on his plate that it's, that's another story. And for him to have the patience to look out for us has been wonderful. He anticipates games. He's always asking, are you taking Ed to the game tonight? I'm telling you, it could not be better. We are very, very grateful. So we're here to let you know that those three men and the staff underscore that part of the school and the, and the district's mission statement as good as anyone or any other example I can think of. It's not just about, and they prove it, it's not just about high grades and high athletic and other achievement. It's about a culture. And we have been the recipients of that culture for the last three years. And hopefully we'll be able to do this next year too. Maybe we'll think of something else we can get as far as a privilege, who knows? I really appreciate all that he did for us, uh, Jared and um, Aaron Robb and um, Jim Conroe. Yep. And the other, oh, even um, Dustin Belcher. Um, I don't know what we would have done without any of them, but, but Jared Shannon was ultimately the, the angel. We went to Hoosick, to the Hoosick game where it was on overload. It was so crowded. And chairs came out from Jared, made sure that we had chairs to sit so that we could see the game. The same at the cage, as, as uh, Tom had said. Um, 
also instrumental in raising that banner um, at Ladley's Gymnasium this year. So uh, I can't say enough um, in gratitude to all of them and especially Jared. He's uh, an outstanding young man, does an ex a great job at Wakona. He's very uh, respectful and kind and, and does his job well and strict as well, but he's, he's just wonderful. So again, we thank all of them uh, and thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Mrs. Ladley, for, uh, for sharing the story with us and the accolades for the staff. And we're just pleased that Mr. Ladley is still able to come to the games and participate in the sport that he loves so much. I think you forgot one person though, Mr. Callahan, for bringing Mr. Ladley to, yeah. to these things and being a good friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, yeah. that, that I'm sure means a lot to him and it's good to see the two of you there. I, I asked him at a, at a smaller game, at the, seeing his grandson play, uh, if he felt like going out and, you know, showing him how it was done, and I think he did. <laughs> yes, he did. If I could add eight kids, 19 grandchildren. <laughs> a lot of basketball and going out around the country. And one more Busy. being born today. So, <laughs> but I want you to see the angel wings on the back of Tom as well. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm so happy we you mentioned go. that because <laughs> he doesn't like praise or anything, but. I don't know what I would have done Let's without him. him the oh, hallucination here. Yeah. Come on. We're going home. You <laughs> he doesn't go home like praise, but believe me, he is our angel. He's a good man. So thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other responses from the audience? Okay. <laughs> All right, student affairs, uh, Mr. McCain. So, um, as the season changed over from the winter sports season to the spring sports season, you've got uh, track and field starting up and softball. But um, one sport that's new to Wakona this year is the unified track and field team, which um, Mr. Shannon has also been uh, instrumental in being part of. Um, so what the unified track and field is, is it's for um, special needs students and other students that aren't, aren't on another um, team to be on a, a sports team together. They're, it's starting next week, and the practices are just Monday and Thursday, and they're just an hour long. But um, it'll be a great time for the students to be able to work together, and um, as sort of like, it's similar to the buddy games in that they, um, there are a lot of activities they can do and work on um, like that, but it's um, having it being lasting over several weeks, and they have, um, a couple of home meets and a couple away meets that they'll have. It's more of a, um, a longer term commitment and we really hope that it will be um, a great experience for them. And um, the National Business Honor Society is also um, volunteering their time to help set up the home um, meets for that, for the Unified Track and Field team. Um, and we hope to get a really good following at the school going to those meets. So it um, should be really good to have. Um, the National Honor Society is also um, donating uh, some baskets and there have um, volunteers that will help um, ba babysitting for some of the parents that will be at the Gib Kittredge auction. Um, so hopefully we can get more people to come if they know their children will be able to um, be babysitted for, um, for free by the National Honor Society. Or I believe it's um, like pay as, as much as they feel is Right, but um, it's offered for the, um, so it should be good to help the give kids a reaction as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Zach? All right, thanks, Zach. Next order of business is secretary's report. Would someone please make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting of March 8, 2018? <coughs> move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of March 8, 2018 as printed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of March 8, 2018 regular meeting. Is there any discussion? <coughs> okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, would a member please dispense with the fine with the uh, warrants? Move to approve warrant number 2018-35 dated March 23rd, 2018 accounts payable in the amount of $730,135.99. Second. Okay, with a motion and a second to approve warrant number 2018-35. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all 
those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Staying. One abstention, motion carries. Move to approve warrant number PR 18-38, dated March 22nd, 2018. Payroll in the amount of $593,898.48. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number PR-2018-38. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Staying. One abstention, motion carries. Move to approve warrant number 2018-38D dated <coughs> March 22nd, 2018. Accounts payable <coughs> in the amount of $227,645.62. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number 2018-38 Delta. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Staying. One abstention, the motion carries. Next order of business is report of the chair. Um, again, we have we continue to have a vacancy in the town of Washington for school committee. Uh, Cummington status update. I'm going to tell you briefly what it is, and then maybe have finance talk about it a little bit more. But um, about a week ago, I received a call from Attorney Dupre, that's our district's attorney, and uh, he informed me that Cummington was wanting to negotiate um, the transition agreement. So the letter that we sent obviously had um, an impact and um, finance met tonight to discuss it and I'll leave it up to them to discuss this further but uh, we did say in the letter to Cummington that the committee was interested in negotiating uh, between Attorney Dupre and myself and Attorney Doctor who was uh, representing Cummington it was agreed that we've got to both be willing to meet you know, somewhere in the middle. So there's got to be movement on both sides if we're going to go forward with this. And then uh, I'll let finance take care of the rest of it because they've got a date chosen to uh, begin the process. Also just noting again the um, school committee election who's up for election this year, uh, which seats are uh, annual meeting town dates. <coughs> and then um, we'll move on to subcommittee reports and recommendations. <coughs> Dr. Kraft Reese for the curriculum. Thank you. The curriculum committee met two weeks ago, and thanks for coming these minutes. I was brought up today, and um, currently there was a presentation, and um, in regards to the iScience science curriculum. So, uh, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approve iScience as the six to eight science curriculum as recommended by the curriculum subcommittee. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve <coughs> iScience as the six to eight grade science curriculum. Is there any discussion? I wonder, um, is that science curriculum used in any other district, <coughs> nearby district that we're aware of? So it's fairly new because of the new standards. So anyone using it is primarily piloting it. But Bourne is used, actually that's why Leslie's not here right now, she's going to Bourne in the morning. Bourne is using it and has been for longer. They took somewhat of a risk in doing so because anything that comes out coinciding with the standards usually that is quickly followed by supplements. If you know what I mean, you, you basically have created a product and how did you know the standards well enough to do so? We're getting the product farther along and more complete. So they had a product and then they've had to add to it. We're getting it when it's more ready to go and Pittsfield's looking at it as well right now. So they're in the same place as us. So we could have jumped on a um, bandwagon when Sean Therrien came to this group was it two years ago now when the standards were adopted in 2015? But we felt that, for lack of better terms, let it get fleshed out a little bit. Let the companies familiarize themselves with the standards, update it, and then we'll do it. Um, so there are a couple <coughs> of districts who have been, that we've been in contact for being one. Uh, but most are more where we are in that they're piloting it right now. So in our opinion, this is the best match to the standards as of right now. Definitely. <coughs> yes. Sean, so Sean Therrien also, one of the reasons we somewhat waited is that when the standards were adopted, the state selected a group of what they called ambassadors. Sean Therrien happened to be selected from Berkshire County, and he's, he's our science <coughs> coordinator, to basically teach them the standards inside out and have them go out and teach others. 
So Sean, for example, has gone to Lennox. Sean's gone to, so Sean, I'm deferring, as is Leslie. Leslie's looking at the quality of the instructional materials. Sean is our expert on the standards. There's a couple areas, and we talked about this with Bonnie and um, Nicole, where he wants to see supplementation. That he thinks we need to get a little more because he knows the standards so well. Um, but y the answer to your question is, yes, it is the closest aligned to the Massachusetts standards, which are a little bit heftier than the national ones. And it's a good base for us. And where it's not strong enough, Sean has identified some resources to supplement it. Not perfect, but it's the closest fit. And it, it's a quality base. There's not great, I can't tell you that there's great data, like a district has used it and tracked the data over time because of its newness. Okay, is there any more discussion? Okay, then all those in favor of approval or approving iScience as a six day science curriculum indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Motion carries. We don't have another meeting set yet. Okay. That concludes your report? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, finance, Mr. Gazzillo, Mr. T. Tomaso. Yeah, we met tonight um, before the school committee meeting. Um, the two major topics on the agenda were um, the reinvigoration of negotiations with Covington based on the letter that we sent and the response uh, from their attorney. Um, the um, finance subcommittee um, uh, is looking forward to reopening those negotiations. I think we had uh, put some solid numbers on the table. You know, we had received um, a letter from Covington with um, some numbers and some unknown. So we're hopeful that um, at our next meeting on April 9th, that Covington will come with a full presentation of um, solid numbers and formulas and explanation of where they've come up with those numbers so we can start the negotiation process. Um, the other topic that um, we reviewed tonight was uh, the budget book for the um, for the town meetings. We made some suggestions to Ms. Falkowski. Um, I think the majority of those suggestions <coughs> came out tonight. We will have until Monday morning um, to submit any additional ones that we see upon reviewing the budget book. Uh, but those were the, the two main topics in the in the short one hour meeting that we had prior to school committee tonight. And our next meeting will be on April 9th at 6.30 um, here. Questions? Okay. All right, thank you. I'll see Mr. Hagmeyer. Uh, <clears throat> we have not met since our last meeting. We do not have a meeting scheduled just yet. But tonight we have the second reading for approval of uh, policy 6760 smoking policy. So this is the second reading. We vote in favor. This will go into our policy manual. So I make the motion be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approve the second reading revisions to policy 6760 smoking policy as recommended by the policy subcommittee. Okay, we have a motion and a second for um, the second reading revision of policy 6760 smoking policy. Uh, this does enact the policy if, if um, voted in affirmative. So is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. That's it. Thank okay, you. thank you. Personnel, let's go ahead and go. We have, at this point in time, we have no dates set for negotiation with the teachers, uh, but I hope that happens fairly soon. Uh, other than that, I have no report, and we have an executive session simply to review minutes of other executive sessions that we can do at the end of the meeting, if that's... So if the committee wants. doesn't object, we'll move that to the end and then adjourn from executive session. Okay. <coughs> that's, that's it. All right. Mr. Les, for technology. No, for report. Okay. Does anyone have any topics they want to bring forward to Mr. Les for technology? Okay. Kona Building Project, Superintendent Kasner. Okay. Um, 
I always feel like there's a lot to report, which is, is excellent because we're getting a lot done and we are getting incredible um, attention and support uh, and guidance from both Skanska, as I've mentioned before, primarily John Benzinger, who's our OPM, who we are in constant communication with. It is just an incredible resource guide and advocate for us, which is his role. He, he advocates for us um, in many ways, but specifically in our relationship with DRA and with the MSBA. Um, and then DRA's expertise um, from Carl, who's the principal, um, who is, is constantly on site. They're coming here from Metro West and they're here far more than I ever anticipated they would be. Um, and they're far more flexible. And then Vladimir, who um, is the um, uh, both the project manager for them as well, the two architects, and they often come with additional people as well based on the conversation. The biggest thing to get the, get the word out, I guess we're on, we're on TV, get the word out, um, is that we have the first of a series, and they really want to emphasize series of community workshops is what they're called um, next week. So we have been sending everything out to the CRA, we've been contacting the senior center, um, we've been sending things out to the individual towns, we're going to be using our email system, um, we're with waiting on some confirmation for babysitting to make sure we have that option. Um, but next week, uh, March 27th at 5 o'clock is the first one in Windsor. They're expecting them to be about an hour and a half. Um, the design team, DRA, will lead them, will start, and then their breakout sessions, similar to those of you who are at the visioning sessions or who've seen the videos, where there'll be small groups facilitated trying to get people's input. Um, so they're about an hour and a half and shortly followed in um, uh, at 7 o'clock at Wakona. Um, March 29th, we start at 5 o'clock and I believe we start in Beckett and then we go to Kittredge at 7. Um, they're really trying to emphasize these are not about selling the project. These are about getting the community's input on what, if, if they believe there is the need, what, what Wakona needs. It's really um, somewhat mini visioning sessions. Um, so those will happen. They really want people to also know it's a series. There will likely be more sessions um, in the fall, next winter, all um, keeping the public informed and getting their input. So that is the biggest thing we have going on right now. Last week, um, I think it was last week, um, myself, not the beginning of this week, the end of last week, yes, myself, um, Sean Therian, who, you know, shout out to, to Sean Therian, he is our science coordinator. He has also become a huge leader in this building project. Um, Sean Therian sat down for the longest, Melissa as well, myself were a part of it, um, with DRA, because we're trying to finish the educational plan. So they came out about uh, two hours early and sat down and helped us walk through the drafting of the educational plan. Because where we're at right now, we've done all the this is our current conditions. <coughs> we need to get in. What do we anticipate we need going forward? What do we think um, classroom space needs to look at like when the building is renovated or, or a new building is built? Um, that document has to go to the MSBA in May. It'll come to this group for approval the second meeting in April. Um, and it will go to the school building committee as well. So you will see that, you'll get a full presentation on that, and you'll have the opportunity to vote on that before it's ever submitted to the MSBA. But right now, what our roles are, um, it involves a lot of people, but you need you need an author. You know, So you've got Joe Sturgis and, and Rick White contributing in technology, you have Jason Dion contributing in security, you have Kerry Mason contributing in the wellness. But what they've emphasized in, uh, Thank goodness for, for Sean Therrien and um, definitely Aaron Robb um, is, is right there as well, but really you need a voice, you need an author who's going to now make sure it all sounds like it, it makes sense and really that has been um, has been Sean taking that lead on that with, with Aaron. So it really, really good. Um, but that's done. So it's going to DRA tomorrow. <coughs> They're kind of like our editors. Done in the sense like here's our draft, now give us feedback. And once we have what we think is a, a strong draft that would be acceptable to MSBA, um, that our design team and our OPM have seen, it'll go to this group for your input and for you to look at. Um, there's, uh, I'm trying to think what else. There was a full, um, so they've been coming out more and more and getting into like the details. A group met with Rose Goddard in Food Services um, and Melissa really talking about the needs of the cafeteria what we have, what we would envision. They talk about things like a scramble, where it's not the traditional go through the cafeteria lines, but kids can access what they might like, more like a food court. And um, that's something similar to what they would see at college. So it's got its benefits uh, for them when they move on, that they'll be used to it. It takes up a little bit less space than the traditional. 
Um, so it's, it's really very progressive, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, and they get, they get as detailed into, you know, food options and then also what, what, what kind of shapes of tables do you want because of what will that facilitate. And if you have this kind of food court atmosphere, do you have some kids who may still want a smaller space to eat in? And would you want something like that where it's off the side that they could go and they could still sit in a, a, more, um, a more secure feeling space? So really very detailed. Um, so groups have been meeting. Um, groups have been meeting and looking at the infrastructure again. We have a report that um, I received that is extremely extremely lengthy um, and detailed around the um, uh, physical plant that I'm going to sh uh, scan and share with you tomorrow um, that you'll receive from DRA because they have to basically do their own investigation. We did something like that to justify the need to MSBA, then they come in with their own experts um, and that's what they've done. Um, there was a visit yesterday, um, Melissa was at, Greg was at, uh, several people were at to Taconic. Um, and we were really able to um, get some kind of details because we really need to start thinking about not only what does this physically look like, but you know, from, from someone like Greg's point of view, how do you schedule it? How does that actually work? Um, so, and that was all facilitated through, through Skanska getting us over to Taconic again. Um, so all, all good things, but the biggest thing, and I'll have a much more detailed update, will be after those workshops because hopefully we'll get some good community output we have snacks and beverages, we have, <laughs> we have some really impressive and uh, dedicated people coming. So uh, hopefully if you have any other suggestions on getting the word out, please let me know. The workshops, we've kind of said there, the location of the workshop is to be attended by residents of that town, perhaps another one. You don't mean to say that it's restricted to that. No. Anybody can go to any workshop depending what what's convenient where he felt comfortable or maybe scheduling even. No, in fact the newsletters encourage that. Yes, and that's I'll make sure that the, the last email emphasizes that as well. If we want one to be close to you for your convenience, but if a different date is convenient, go to whatever one you want. Yeah. I'll emphasize that. So yeah, we're moving moving along and learning a lot and we have some really uh, excellent people guiding us and then we have some really excellent people internally stepping up and really taking a lot of interest so it's been good okay any questions okay we'll move on to the next order of business which is uh Lori again i'm gonna mix that up so it doesn't <laughs> So, um, <laughs> completely understandably, um, question has come up about the school calendar, just making sure that we're kind of giving a good update on where we're at, get some perspective around it. Um, certainly for those of you who have had um, students home from school unexpectedly, especially if you're not uh, working in education and you're not home with them, um, it seems like quite a few days. Perspective-wise, we, I think, I would say, um, I, in my opinion, made a wise decision in moving our start date back, so we're still in very good shape. So just to give you some historical dates, it's nice to, to be able to see the perspective, um, and we will be as well without any changes for next year. So we made the change um, to start before Labor Day. So as a result of that, we have had eight snow days and our last day of school at this point is Thursday, June 21st. So we're still out uh, well over a week before many of the schools in Eastern Mass who are up against that June 29th date now. They're up against that for a combination of reasons. They haven't had such an extraordinary amount of days that they've looked at giving them relief. They started after Labor Day and had an extraordinary amount of days. So that's kind of where, where that is. Um, next year, if we do nothing differently, and we happen to have a third year in a row with eight snow days, we would get out on um, June 22nd. So uh, we've, we've taken a pretty big step, and that's why we have the flexibility we do. We, this year, took half of Good Friday. And that's why we're, we're out that day before that Thursday, June 21st. Next year, Good Friday falls on April vacation. So we don't have that window there. Um, and then it just kind of shows you, we had that blip of a year. I think that was my, my first year and we had one snow day. <laughs> so I thought, this is no big deal. What do these superintendents complain about? Uh, I didn't barely knew the road crews. Now I can tell you, you know, detailed information about each road superintendent and their, their personality and preference on weather calls. But, um, but yes, so it, that's not our norm. But when you look back, um, to like the 13-14 school year, we were out on June 26th, even though we only had six days, it's because we were starting after Labor Day. Um, I did include for you as well, well actually one, one quick thing, um, 
questions come up about graduation. Um, if you look at the link I included about the policy, the, the um, Department of Ed's policy on graduation is graduation can be no more than 12 days prior to the scheduled last day of school, not snow days. So our scheduled last day of school is June 12th. I think graduation is June 3rd. We're fine. We're absolutely fine. Um, it's purposeful. They don't want people having to play around with graduation dates as a result of weather issues. So that's just come up with a few people saying, do we have to worry about graduation? We do not. Um, so um, the other thing that has come up, and Nicole raised this question, um, and I, I promised our admin team I'd be honest with you about their impressions around it, um, but the question has been um, raised around something called blizzard bags. And I, you, you were actually uh, right, Nicole. Um, I always mix up Mohawk and Gateway. It's Gateway. Gateway, you're right. So um, a couple of districts have experimented with them. A couple of districts have done it proactively. Like, we don't care if we have no snow days. We're going to prepare in the late summer, early fall with an option. And there's a multitude of ways they've done it. If we hit five snow days, we'll use this. If we have snow days after March 1st, we'll use this. That kind of thing. So, multiple different ways. Um, some districts are now doing it reactively to try and figure out ways to, to once they got midway through February and said, if we have any more days, we're going to do this. Um, there's definitely strong, strong mixed feelings on that. Um, it, it doesn't have the support of, of our administrative team, I think, for the reason that I mentioned about us starting before Labor Day. And if they have to pick what's a really quality of instruction, the level of concern that they're hearing about some of these, these blizzard bags is higher than a day on June 19th. Um, but I think that what is the most important thing to emphasize is that regardless of all that, it would be a school committee decision ultimately. You would have to approve it. That's through the state. Um, it would probably have to be a group of people who would get together, really look at everything from what do you do about paraprofessionals and cafeteria workers who work 180 days and now maybe technically working 175 days. You know, those kinds of questions will come up. Um, what do you do for special education? Sure, sure. So if you haven't seen in the news, for those of you who don't spend too much time on Twitter, which um, which school administrators do this time of year with snow days, um, you hear about blizzard bags. So the idea around it is, and the most information that I've gotten is the superintendent and Gateway shared all of his resources. Um, and like I said, it can be many different ways. You might decide that if I ha if we have more than five days, we'll use a blizzard bag. Blizzard bags are that there's prepared instructional materials that would be the equivalent of a day of school that have been provided by teachers and that students would complete at home on a canceled day for weather. Teachers would also have to make themselves available. The state will not approve the content of them, nor will they participate in your creation of them. They will approve the concept if you can confirm we are maintaining integrity around this. They have a couple things they say. Um, one of them is, is that you have to have arrangements for people who either A, have no technology, or you could be in the middle of Eastern Mass right now and you just haven't had it because you had a power outage. So you have to have accommodations. You have to have accommodations for people who may have technology but one computer and three kids who happen to be home during that day. You have to have ways of addressing special education needs. Um, so there's criteria, but the substance has to be created by the district and approved by the school committee. Typically, um, any districts who have done it have also had to do some kind of uh, bargaining with their, their collective bargaining agreements as well. Um, impacts obviously are different depending on if I'm a fifth grade teacher, or I'm a PE teacher, or I'm a paraprofessional. So there's a lot of technical complexities around it. Um, I did ask. Um, it's not common, but obviously people who are doing it um, are, getting, are getting attention for it because it's, it's different and it's a, it's a way of addressing something that could be a concern. Um, there are a couple districts in Berkshire County, Farmington River being one, who have looked at it and are, are piloting it. Um, everyone else is <coughs> kind, of, kind, of, kind of tentatively taking a look but has not taken any steps towards it. Gateway has them in place right now. So that's kind of, um, that's blizzard bags. Any questions about it? <laughs> Are you tired? Are you more tired than a snow day? <coughs> not about blizzard bags, but about the calendar. The calendar's tiring. I know, it's very tiring. 
two kids home from school too. So. Uh, have we thought ever thought or talked about getting rid of April vacation and moving February vacation one week closer to March? No, but one year we um, one year we tried um, downsizing February vacation, yeah. Yeah, that and that didn't go over well. So parents and families like to stick with the vacations that they can rely on. In fact, in most of the state it follows these. So I, we can bring it up again, but it's probably going to be the same thing that we had with the February. Yeah, we didn't completely eliminate it, but it was like right. That's I think we made a long. I think we made a long. Four day weekend. Yeah. We did look into it, and, and and the problem is, unless you do it everywhere, you know, in a group in an area, then it's really hard. Parents go on vacation, they get you know grandparents, a lot of, you know. So if you limit, if only one school district does it, it's it's really hard to make everybody happy. And, and I think we were probably the only one that did it. The other thing, um, and you know, we might want to, I'm not saying, you know, we might want to hold our breath a little bit on this because um, we've got the Labor Day in our favor. We're starting before. Um, and I, I don't usually subscribe to this, being more from Eastern Mass, but there is a belief that once Boston has an issue, sometimes all of a sudden things become an issue. So you, you people are more familiar. <laughs> um, like MCAS, we've got a couple days, and how many years has Western Mass maybe been slammed with a bunch of days, and MCAS stays as scheduled. But uh, Boston got slammed this year, and there have been a couple couple gives. Um, one of the things that's coming up right now among superintendents is um, op other options. Being a little more flexible other than giving up vacations, Saturdays, or blizzard bags. What if you extended the day by an hour for four weeks? You know, that kind of thing to buy back a day. Um, are there going to be other options? Because right now, um, some of the bigger districts, Chelmsford, Bill Ricca, are at June 29th and have no options. And they thought yesterday was it today today they thought was going to push them over mm -hmm. and so there's been a lot of push around this so part of me is interested to see what other options might come out given that um while blizzard bags in theory seemed like a good idea and in like a farmington river it might be a, a feasible there are some logistics that like a bill rick is probably saying how are we going to do that you know that kind of thing um is there another option that might be a little bit more uh, reasonable for a larger district so you might hear something because there's a lot of attention right now on this in um, Eastern Mass when people are literally at June 29th yeah I think <coughs> to me the concern right is, is the is the students attention in the month of June right because we finish MCAS by the end of May which is by state order correct by that some point in, in May so now we have three weeks in June where where are the middle school high school kids attention during that period if they've if they've kind of they felt they've they've, they've taken that test mm -hmm. that they've kind of worked towards you know now we just we they have three more weeks and how does it how does their attention what's the, the quality really? time you know yes. what is the quality education time I know when my kids were small you know, you'd say as a typical parent, well, you'll be waiting, you'll be going July 1st, and, and they'd just look at it and say, yeah, but at the end of the year, we don't do anything anyway. So, so we're, we're trading school, off days in February where we have to study to <laughs> days in June where we might take a walk, we, you know? I worry the least about the high school because the final schedule just gets pushed back. So if you're a diligent high school student, you're right. taking finals. And it's not, you know what I mean? You don't have fluff days. The, the finals are, are pushed back. And the bio MCAS is late for those ninth and 10th graders. Um, so the, the high school, it really, it's just a moving back of that culmination, which are the final exams. If you're gonna pull a final exam, something else is probably going on. Um, so it's, but at the, it's really the elementary, but I think what our principals were saying is, um, those are the same kids that you're going to kindergarten blizzard bag. Like how, at least there's the social dynamics, the interactions, the curriculum is being followed. If they had to pick one, they felt more that they could qualify, they could they could endorse the educational integrity, and then you do get into you know similar arguments if um, if it's snowing outside the window or if it is the the Friday before a holiday, so or somebody's birthday um, at the little level at the young level. But so it was just neither neither were ideal. The high school I worry about the least because it's just a shove back of that calendar. They're going to be in finals, um, but. Um, at the K-8 level when I did raise the question. Not to say there aren't people whose interest isn't piqued by, by the blizzard bags. It's just the majority here, we're not backed against the wall the way some are because of that Labor Day. 
So June 21st doesn't sound horrible. And so the impetus that you might have if you literally were thinking you were going to be sitting here June 29th and I was crossing my fingers every time we saw a snowflake going, we've got no options or we're going to be here on a Saturday, is not there. I'd say Zach hasn't worried about any of this at all, have you? <laughs> uh, no, not, not. No, he encourages the days to be calm. He's nice, so he doesn't really... He, is this written right here, so... <laughs> So that's that. We can you know, certainly continue the conversation. Let's hope we're, we're past the, the major time right now. Um, I did just include some other information just so you have it because if you as a committee or as a group want to look at it further, it's all there. Um, it would have to be approved by the committee. Um, again, uh, Trooper Canada, just an awesome resource. I brought, his, his, I brought the concern you brought to me to him. <coughs> Um, and he went through, I won't read them out loud. This is obviously something people can access, but um, for some of the reasons we discussed last time with, with building security being based on confidentiality, I won't go through every one, but really what I was talking with him about is securing buildings after hours in a way that's reasonable and still meeting the needs of the public. And he rattled off um, three major things he'd like to see improve and has actually taken some steps already at Craneville. Um, his big one is obviously when we look at a new building for Wakona, um, he, he's an ad, he's, a, he's a, um, a proponent of um, a public space and an academic space and the more you can secure a building um, when it's being used for one reason from the other part of it the better. Um, and Chief Co, actually, and maybe we could model it here at school committee, is coming up with language that will be read at all school events. Actually, I did not know this, but um, um, our fire chief, who was at our last safety meeting, after that horrible nightclub fire in Rhode Island, it's actually required that in events of a certain size, you actually do read something, saying here's where the exits are, here's what, we'll so Chief Co is coming up with that language, and it will be at athletic events, concerts, <laughs> things of that nature. Um, so just, they're a great resource though, so if anything does come up, we meet every single month, and anything I ever bring up, we have <coughs> resources right away, suggestions, and they're in the building the next day trying to, to improve things. So please send them to me, and I will, I will have them talk about um, solutions. So I won't read this because you were able to, um, but just you heard um, Mr. Callahan who it's just such a, such an incredible supporter of our district, but him talk a little bit about Jared and Aaron and the, the cultures they set. And I think that um, it was funny because we had our students, partic our student participation was in the walkout day on the day, March 14th, and a lot of other students were ready to go and then they got a snow day, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, right? So, and that was, and there were some administrators, I think they were like, okay, good. That was not our feeling. Our feeling was we have respectful kids who had a really great purpose and a really great um, event organized and we wanted to see that happen and we're really proud of what happened and um, a lot of it's because of the students we have but I think a lot of it's also because of the respectful dynamic they have with the leadership in that building and the staff. <coughs> um, so if you, if you saw tweets coming out from students, from staff, um, really positive. And then the middle school, um, which was really kind of neat, um, did a walk in, which was more kind of a developmentally appropriate activity for them, for those who wanted to. And Mr. Falkowski tied it to um, kind of kindness overall and kind of, you know, um, ways to bring up other things and if you see i like i love this because some of us need it on like cell phones as well sometimes when you're like annoyed with your you know significant other or whatever <laughs> and that's that bubble when if you have an iphone that pops up when you know someone's writing to you and if there's some kind of a negative interaction your anxiety probably goes up right so this is on our chromebooks now at the middle school and the intent behind it is before you send that before you use that device are you doing it to, to cause harm? And if you are, stop. You know, like that, but that's the message. So they took a pledge around that, um, that I will not use my device to cause harm. Um, and they, they tied that in. So that was really a positive. And I think that's a, um, you know, again, like Mr. Falkowski said, is it gonna solve all the problems? No, but will somebody maybe stop and think? Yeah, you know, it does saying don't text and drive on bumper stickers stop everyone? No, but does somebody stop and think? Hopefully. Um, so that that was that, um, but my my um, mid cycle see if I'm going on and on is is like don't worry I will not read it. Um, I think that would be a, you should evaluate me poorly if I do. Um, if you have any questions about it, 
I tried to kind of just give you like, here's where I am right now, here's where I think I need to go in the next two months, two and a half months, um, and here's how I'm gonna go about it. And if you have any input like now based on it, please give it to me. If you wanna meet with me, that'd be great. And we could sit down um, you know, prior to the actual evaluation as well, that'd be fine. So this is a required point in you know, the mid cycle review for evaluating the superintendent. We don't actually do an evaluation right now. That's not until June, but this at least gives us um, an indication of, of where the goals are, uh, how progress is on the goals, and, and um, where we expect to be in June. Does anybody have any questions on any of the four goals that we have presented? Okay. Someone advised to do four goals, not five this year. I thanked that person. And I got to the fourth goal and I was like, one more. I was like, oh my God. So that was some good feedback. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> if you have between now and then, please do you know, feel free to reach out or we can sit down, whatever's helpful. Okay, again, uh, the superintendent's noted the senior activities events at Kona starting on May 27th, including on June 3rd with the graduation. Again, the committee is invited to attend these. Um, I guess, like I said before, even the prom if you want to go. Um, the superintendent has no personnel changes to review, and the chair is not familiar with any old business or new business. Um, does any committee member have a, top, a topic they wish to have covered at April 12th meeting? That's our next meeting. Okay, then we'll move on to our remarks for the good of the committee. Uh, Mr. I noticed uh, during the snow days that the best part of that, uh, other than letting my wife sleep, uh, was uh, Mr. Rob and Mr. Messina's uh, skits, I guess as you were, they were put on Facebook. Uh, the only thing I would say is that the last <coughs> one advertising the play and stuff, they could have broken out in song and it probably would have added to it, but uh, they were really funny, they were well made and, and it was, uh, it was interesting to see. It, it, it was nice to see. I like the chair race myself. Now, now that's the only one I missed, but the, the shovel in the snow. But the, the last one was pretty good. I, I, it, I they got halfway to it before I realized what they were doing. But uh, I guess they, they know who their audience is. So that was, that was really nice. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So then we'll, um, we'll have the motion for executive session. The result of the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee goes into executive session at 7.49 p.m. in accordance with MGL Chapter 30A and Section 21A3 to accept minutes of previous executive sessions for which the chair is declared an executive session is necessary to protect the bargaining position of the committee and to not reconvene an open session at the conclusion of the executive session. I will read your name and indicate your preference. Dr. Crabtree? Yes. Ms. DiTomaso? Yes. Mr. Gazzillo? Yes. Mr. Hagmeyer? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Lecatel? Yes. Mr. Les? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Arrocos? Yes. Mr. Martels? Yes. We are in executive session.